Well, we still aren't quite sure, actually have no idea, what motivated Stephen Paddock to murder so many people. Nevertheless, syndicated columnist Ruben Navarrete says he knows what America should do in response to those killings. Start profiling white men, all of them. Quote, there's plenty of evidence that law enforcement officers profile African Americans, Latinos, and Muslim Americans, Navarrete wrote in a recent piece. How did white men get to be so special in an era when so many mass shootings are linked to gunmen who fit that profile? It is still. Ruben Navarrete joins us right now. Ruben, thanks for coming on. Hey, Tucker, longtime friend, first time guest. <laughs> so you're for profiling now. What, what, yes. what changed your mind? I thought you were against racial profile. I thought it was racist, but now it's not. Well, that, you know, there's two sides to that coin, right? The same folks who think it's okay to profile African American motorists on a freeway or Muslim Americans at an airport or Mexicans on the border, they say, well, look at the numbers. Likewise, when you're talking about serial killers and mass murders, it's inescapable that most of those folks are white males. It just makes sense to keep it all even. Okay, so you're, j just for the record, you're for racial profiling now. So the next time some big city police department says we're profiling people outside a mosque, you're going to say, yeah. good job. You've got to finish the, the, the quote in the column you read, the column that I just wrote this, this afternoon, talks about not all white males. You said, I want to profile all white males. No, I want to profile white males who buy an unusually large number of high-impact, powerful weapons and ammunition. If you do that, you add that behavior to that characteristic. Yeah, I think those are good people to keep an eye on, keep a list of, and keep track of. So do you think there's something about, I mean, I guess what I found so striking about your column was the racial angle. I don't think most people looked, uh, I didn't, I don't look at most shootings through the lens of race, and I didn't look at this one. I thought it was striking that he was old. I thought it was striking he was a former yep. IRS guy. I thought a lot of things were yep. interesting, but I, his race didn't jump out at me, but but obviously it was a real concern for you. Why was this a it racial was. killing? Yeah. Yeah. It was for me and a lot of other Latino African-American friends I talked to. Uh, they likewise sort of hold their breath whenever they hear about an incident like this, and they say, oh, geez, I hope this wasn't one of ours. I actually heard somebody who was a, a Christian fundamentalist say that he does the same thing. He always hopes that it's not one of his uh, constituency, his community. So in terms of Latinos and African-Americans, they are afraid, increasingly afraid, of white men with 42 guns in their arsenal. Uh, who walk around with a grievance oftentimes as if somehow the world has done them wrong and they would have gotten into a better college if a minority hadn't taken their spot and all the like. So you do, I, I wonder if stage. you think, by, by the way, folks there, working to... class folks who talk about mm -hmm. trade deals, who put them out of work. There's one grievance after another with this bunch. Yeah, this bunch. I wonder if, but we've got a driver's license photograph, by the way, of the shooter on the screen. I don't know if you can see it, but our viewers may be wondering what that is. I wonder if when you go home and replay this tape and you hear yourself making generalizations about an entire racial group if you'll think, wow, I've become a racist. I wonder if yeah. you'll come to that realization. I've been called every name in the book, Tucker, by the right, left, uh, you know. No, I just no, got that's, very a sincere, that's a sincere question, though. Don't, don't blow it off. You just said I think about been... an entire racial group, they do right. this, they're this way, they have these attitudes. Right. And that's, the, of course, the textbook definition of racism. So, Tuck, so I wonder Tucker, if, if you know that. Yeah. Here, here's, here's the thing, and, and don't be condescending to me because it reminds me of white liberals. You and I both find white liberals to be really annoying, okay? So don't, don't say, I wonder if you know that. I've been called a racist just last week when I took a stand against African-American athletes kneeling during the national no, don't, anthem. Don't dodge the my, question my and get into this. I'm offending both sides. No, no, no. I'm, I'm being very specific. I'm saying when you, like 30 seconds ago, not last week, said of an entire group of people who share only skin color, that's all they have in common. And, and they, behavior, the fact that they stockpile weapons and oh, ammunition. that yes. white people do. So you're comfortable with making derogatory statements about a whole group of people based on their race. Because I what am I'm not comfortable, comfortable with, doing Tucker, that. That's fine. Well, let me think about that again, Tucker. I watch your show, and you often do that on this show, in fact. If give me one example. Give me one, give me one example where I've I made think, any generalization about a group on the basis yeah. of their race. One time. I think in the... I'll give you one example. In the future, and you did this just last week, when you talk about immigration, you should not rely on people from FAIR or CIS, the Center for Immigration Studies, groups what? that 20 years ago, Tucker, when oh, I first met you, I, I you would said, criticize, give me an example. You would criticize when you wrote for the Weekly Standard. Stop. Give me an example of me deriding an entire group of people on the basis of their race, and you can't because I don't, yeah. because I don't believe in that, and I never have, and you just did, and I'm wondering I when that became okay. When did that okay, become okay so I want to you do to be that clear, in public? Let's be clear about this. Let's be clear about this for the third and fourth time. 
it's not just the racial characteristic. It says in the column, if you're a white male who stockpiles ammunition and high-powered weapons, the government should no, keep track of you. You just said it's white the men have these that, attitudes a, and they run around and they're mad because their kids didn't get into college. Yes. It's like, it's not okay well, to make generalizations based on race. It has something to do, something race. to do with the shows they watch at night. And the sense that this grievance this mentality is, is fostered you know, in them it's over and over again. That you can say something that's the textbook definition of racism and then accuse me of it for calling you out. So, so <laughs> Tucker, mean, it's like this cool little the trick is, you figured it out. Here's, here's the thing. It doesn't really bother me yeah. if somebody calls me a racist. They do it on the right, left, and center all the time. No, but I only I'm, care that I make them think. No, no, but I... I'm hoping to make you think about what you just said. I'm not saying that you are a racist. I'm saying how what you, you get, just how said you get by is if the racism. FBI is saying, Tucker, if the FBI is saying that the vast majority of serial killers and mass murders are white males, how do you get right. away with not profiling them? How did they become so special that somehow right. the rules so that special. apply to other people being Your profiled? Your words are dripping with hostility. You make me nervous because I know that you're basically a reasonable guy, but you're dripping with race yes. hatred all of a sudden, and it makes me worry about where this country is going. Mm. It really does. I mean that. Yeah. Ruben, thanks for coming on tonight.